Uh, I think it's on now. Okay, I think you can hear me now. Looks like my microphone is working. Hello, everybody. How are you tonight? I decided to hop on and do a little bit of a surprise live stream. So I don't know if anyone's going to hop on with me or not because it's kind of last minute and I didn't tell anybody I was coming. But um, So if you pop on, please say hi in the chat. I would love to um, talk to you. And I'm going to give me a second here. I'm just going to make sure that my, oh, yep, my voice is coming through, I think. Although it sounded really loud. Let's see if I can turn it down. Let's try this. Hello, hello, hello. All right, I think that might be a little better. Let's see if that um, that looks that does look a lot better in terms of the sound. Hey guys, hey Linda, hey Mari, hey Mari, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna listen. It might echo for a second. Let me just make sure my sound sounds better now. Yes, that's much better. Okay, hey guys, thanks for coming to hang out with me. I just decided to um, jump on for a minute and um, do a little bead rolling if you guys want to. That would be a little fun, right? And I have this, um, here, let me turn it up a little. Mari, um, hang on. Let's see if that, I think that'll work a little bit better. Testing. Testing, testing, testing. Here's the microphone. This might be better. Let me know if that's better. Mary, okay, Mary, nice. Linda's got a thumbs up. All right, let me know if the volume goes down. The, um, I didn't have the, the microphone wasn't plugged in when I started the live stream, so it had to pick it up later. So Mary, so I love that spelling though, that's nice. I love unique. Mine is boring. It's the K-E-L-L-Y, and but everybody always, I have to spell it for everybody because there's so many ways to spell Kelly. <laughs> and I'm like, it's the plain boring one <laughs> with the Y. <laughs> All right, I'm going to switch over to the hands cam. There we go. Hello. So what are you guys doing tonight? Anything fun? Watching me, right? <laughs> that's about it. So here's what I wanted to do tonight. So if you watch the Mother's Day video um, that we put out, I put out on Sunday, you may have noticed that there is a brand new size of paper bead roller. So there is now six, which I have right here. And you can tell this is the new one that I just did. It's a little lighter than, than the other ones, it looks like. There we go. And so um, a couple people have asked me, they didn't really understand how the new one fit in to all five of them. So I thought, you know what, I had a little extra time tonight and I thought I'd get on and maybe roll some beads and just show you what is the best use for each of the different sizes. So if you have them, that might help you. And if you are trying to decide what to buy, that might help you figure out which ones that you might need first. Linda, what kind of beads are you rolling? Like what paper are you using or what size? are you doing tell me about your project while we're while we're having fun here all right so while I'm waiting for Linda to tell me what she's doing I'm going to order these in color let's see make sure I'm on screen here I'm gonna order these by smallest to largest so and and if you guys are like me and I think based on the questions I'm getting you guys are like me um, when I give you the actual like diameter of these bead rollers it means nothing to you. It means nothing to me. When I say like one eighth bead roller, I'm like, I have no idea what that means. Um, which is why I color coded them. So I could just say the green one. <laughs> Cause it's just so much easier. <laughs> so, okay. So let me put these in order of diameter. Okay. So here we go. 
So this is an order of diameter, and so I'm going to start the green. So for my bead rollers, the green is your smallest diameter. It's going to give you the thinnest beads. And I got these cute pink strips. And what I'm going to do is roll a bead with um, these strips are all exactly the same. And so you could, you'll be able to see the difference on um, what the same strip will look like using different diameters of bead rollers. So it's a lightweight cardstock. Nice. Rounded beads. You know, rounded beads are tough because, and hold on, I'm going to have to walk away from the microphone for a quick second to grab my glue. Give me just a quick second. Okay, it was right on the shelf behind me, but I wasn't sure how well you'd be able to hear me if I kept talking. So um, what I have found with rounded beads, so it's hard to give you an exact because it depends. It depends on the diameter of the bead roller. It depends on the thickness of the cardstock. But I have found that I can get pretty close if I use multiple strips. So try, with the strips you're using, try layering um, two or three in a stack and then rolling it and you will probably get closer to a rounded bead that way. Is that, I don't know if you might already be trying that, but that's my trick when I want a rounded bead is I layer my strips and go from there. Cause again, it's just different. Every paper, every time you do it, it's a little different. All right, so I'm gonna take one of these beautiful pink strips and We'll do the green. So this is the smallest. The green bead roller is the smallest. And I cannot remember off the top of my head the exact diameter because, like I said, those numbers, <laughs> I don't have a head for numbers. I don't know about you guys, but doing math in my head is difficult. My son is a whiz. That kid, he is 10. He can do math like crazy. I'll ask him to figure out the tip at restaurants because <laughs> I need to pull out a calculator for it. Um, so... I call it the green. So this is the tiniest. So if you want small beads or if you want beads where you're going to use seed beads with it and you don't want the seed beads to slide up into the holes of the paper bead, your green is your best bet. So for really tiny beads or for when you're going to be using tiny beads next to your paper bead, green, definitely. So there's our green. So this, these strips are just your basic, you know, your basic, uh, I think they're half inch. All right, so we'll put the green to the side with that one right next to it so we remember which is which. Who else is on tonight? I've got Mary and Linda. Who else? Say hi if you're, uh, if you're out there. Don't be shy. Hang out with me. All right, just making sure we're still, yep, we're still on screen. That's one of the challenges when you're doing uh, this stuff is making sure that, that I stay on the screen so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now I'm gonna use the red. This is the second largest, and um, this is 3.30 seconds, I know that, because this is the second bead roller that I came out with, actually. The blue was the first, the red was the second. This is the second most popular size of bead roller. And if anybody knows, if you want to guess which of the other four are the um, most popular, I've probably said it before, put, it, put that in the chat. Tell me what, the most, what you think the most popular one is. So this red one is the second largest. So it is also good if you're wanting to do small beads, but not as tiny like maybe you want to do a small bead but you're going to use a leather cord for it if you use the green one you're probably it depends on your leather cord but you're probably not getting that on a leather cord so if you need to do a small bead that but put it on a larger stringing material the the um, red is your best bet and so we will roll hey Rhonda North Georgia mountains. Which are probably close to the Western North Carolina mountains, I'm betting. Which is a place I go quite a bit. Three sixteenth. Mary was guessing three sixteenth is the most popular. 
Any other guesses? All right, so that's the my red, which is, I think it said 3.30 seconds. So you can see if, if you look, let me make sure I'm on screen here. I got to switch. Here, let me move them down a little. I have to switch um, screens. I can watch the chat or I can watch what I'm doing. I can't watch both. So, <laughs> Okay, so um, you can see there's not a ton of difference between when I use the green and red. There is a little bit, and I think, I don't know how well you can see the details, they're pretty close in size, although this one obviously is just a little bit smaller because the core is smaller. But what I see the biggest difference the most between these two is this is smoother. Like the ridges are not as pronounced. The ridges are a little more pronounced here, and I think that's just an, an aspect of having the larger bead core. And it is a little taller here in the middle, so it's a slightly bigger bead. Um, the ridges aren't as fine looking as they are in this one. But other than that, they're pretty close. So if you wanted to get by using one or the other of these, you probably could. Although, like I said, if you're using some larger stringing materials, definitely gonna want your red for that. Okay, so let's go to the blue. This was the first bead roller that I ever made. It's the 1 8th. And so it's gonna be the third largest of the set that I have. Whoops. That's been happening to me lately. I don't know if I let some of my paper get a little too um, humid or what. There we go. I've noticed that if the paper is in a humid area, like I went on a trip this weekend to Washington DC and um, it was a little bit humid in the hotel room. We actually had to move rooms because we had some, it was really humid. And then there were ants in the bathroom, you guys. It was nasty. So we had to, we had to be there the first night, but the second day in the morning, they moved us to a much nicer room. And then um, after that experience, I, you know, I took a bunch of beads to roll for a project and the paper kept fraying at the top. And I'm wondering if it was because of the humidity in that room. I don't have a lot of humidity in my house. It's pretty dry. So I don't have too much of a trouble here. But that's a, I should do an experiment about that and see how humidity impacts the cardstock. I know it will make copier paper stick in a copier because I when I in college I worked for an architect and we had that problem because we used to run off huge architectural books. I mean, this is back in the 90s. You did not have like online copies of things. And um, the office had so much humidity, they had to have a special cabinet to keep all of the copier paper in because if it wasn't kept in that cabinet, um, it would get too humid and stick in the copier. So that's how I know humidity can affect paper in weird, weird ways. All right, so here's our third. Let me switch over. I want to make sure it's still on the screen. Okay, here we go. So there's our blue. Yes, I am full of useless facts. Like it's not useless, right? We're, using, we're doing paper bead rolling. I'm full of strange, odd facts. Let's put it that way. So now our very same strip used with the blue um, is starting to look a little different because whereas these two are very almond shaped, like they have real points at the end, now with the blue 1 8th, we're it's still got points, but it's starting to be a little bit more, less of a pronounced um, point at either end. It's still there, but it's not nearly as pointy as like this one. You can see a much bigger difference between these two. Now, so that helps you see kind of how the diameter of bead roller you choose is changing the shape of your strip. All right, we had no more guesses. So um, the blue, the 1 8 blue is actually the most popular selling bead roller that we have. This, we go, th we sell probably twice as many blues as we do any other color. And here's why I think. I have found, and especially when I'm teaching classes or when I'm teaching kids is the most telling, um, the blue is the easiest for them to use. I'm not sure why, I have a couple theories on it. I think number one, the size of it, it's kind of like um, the middle bear <laughs> and Goldilocks. The size of it is real easy to use. Um, it's not too big that makes it awkward, but it's also not teeny tiny and difficult to turn. 
So I think it's just sort of that middle, that middle size that just is comfortable in people's hands. And it creates a nice bead with almost any paper strip. Um, if you take a very small paper strip and you try to do it with either of any of these three, it's going to look more like a pony bead, which if that's what you're going for, that's cool. Oh, Mary, thank you. <laughs> she says she always enjoys listening to me. If you, I try to be interesting if I can and not just like chatter, but um, if, so if you take a very tiny, a very small um, strip and you put it on any of these three, you're going to get something that looks a little bit more like a pony bead. Um, but it's not, the, I don't know, I don't think it's as attractive. But a small strip on this will still look good, and a big strip on this will still look good. Um, big strips on these can be a little sometimes overwhelming or too chunky. So that's where I think this blue is sort of like, you know, the middle bear of the Goldilocks um, story. So I think that's why it's the most popular. It's the one most people buy first, and then um, they will start buying the other ones, which is why on Amazon... I have these two sold singly, and then I have everything else in sets because of how people tend to buy this by itself, and then they'll buy this, and then they'll buy sets. So, or these three are sets. Anyway, that's the story. All right, let's do yellow. I probably This is probably the one I use the least, I'll be honest. It's the longest one because when I'm um, getting the parts for these, I always try to get the longest that I can so that you have m the most room possible for your bead rolling. Because we do manufacture all of these here in my workshop, here at the house. My husband and I do all the work ourselves, put everything together, stain it, all that stuff. So if you ever have any issues with your bead rollers, definitely talk to me about it because I can help you. So you can kind of see how this is, is looking a little, again, less almond shaped now that we have this big wide yellow guy. It's not quite a tube, but it's definitely not pointy like it, like the other ones. It's a little off center, Let's see if we can fix that. All right, so there's our yellow. And now we're really starting to see the difference. If I put these two next to each other, you really see the difference. You wouldn't even know those were this. Oops, those were the same strip. It's the glue stuck to my finger. Um, really big difference. And there's the. I, this one won't sit up on its end. That one's even so flat now it'll sit on its end. This one won't. It's too pointy. So this is the green, the smallest one, and that's the yellow, which isn't even the biggest one yet. So this is really good, again, if you're doing a thick um, thong, like leather thong type bracelet, or you're doing a, um, a thicker memory wire even, um, I don't know what else, like what are those called, like the slide necklaces? There's another name for those and I can't remember right now. Um, this would be good for that if you just wanted to put a paper bead on like a, as a slide something like that. Do I ever make any wide, very wide beads? Um, I have, I have in the past, although I don't know that I've done any tutorials with very wide beads. Um, the widest bead I've made, I made a purse with beads, um, which is that in the other room, I could go grab it, I suppose. Maybe when we're done, if you guys want me to, I'll go grab the purse and show you. It's, I made it maybe like two years ago, I guess. And that was the probably the largest, I guess, longest bead that I've made, that I made a project with. But um, there's some interesting, I've seen some really interesting kind of geometric necklaces made with beads that are like three inches wide. And I think, I always think that's interesting. Oh, I do, oh, I know. Here's the biggest bead I've ever made. You ready? Oh, that one's not too big. This one right here. This was made from a poster board. And you can see it's way bigger than any uh, bead roller I have. I had to hand roll this without any kind of uh, thing because it's, it was way too big. But I made a bunch of these out of um, 
Hey, Gina. <laughs> That's okay. We're not we're not done yet. I'm still hanging out for a while. I was some they asked me if I had a bigger bead, so I'm showing everybody this bigger bead. Yeah, this was done with poster board. So my plan for this, so I had a bunch of these. I was gonna try to make flowers, like really big, wide flowers for like a decorative wall hanging thing, and it it never quite worked the way I wanted it to. I think these ones I think I need it to be thicker down here at the bottom and I just kind of never went back and redid this project but this might be a nice tutorial to do at some point to do this so it could be actually what would be really neat is to use this as a you can maybe get a round mirror and put these as the border around a mirror I think would be really cute so maybe I'll do a tutorial what do you guys think would you like to see a tutorial on something like that where we use these poster board and make like a, a wall hanging mirror. I'm trying to do some more stuff, not just jewelry, uh, but some other th things you can use paper beads for. I've got a whole list of ideas. Let's see, I don't know, let's measure. Um, where's my ruler? You think with all these shelves I have behind me that I would be more organized, but I'm so not. I gotta work on that. So these are four inches long and the width is only three quarters at the widest part. And it's, and it's um, poster board like you do for school projects. You can get at Walmart, colored poster board. They were hard to roll, I gotta tell you. That poster board is stiff. Tutorial please, okay, I'll do one. I'll put it on my list. I gotta do the flip flop tutorial first. I've got, you guys, I've got so many ideas for tutorials. Like I could, if I could have all the time in the world to just do tutorials, I would be in heaven. Like it would be, I would never run out. It would be so much fun. I was, there's so many cool things you can do with these beads. When we were in um, the Air and Space Museum in DC this weekend in the gift shop, they had, so this is a sneak peek. So I haven't even like figured out how I'm gonna do it exactly yet, but I'll tell you guys, cause if you're on my lives, you always get sneak peeks, right? So, um, so in the, you know, Washington's known for the cherry trees. And of course we missed them. Cherry trees bloomed like two weeks ago and the leaves were already out. So we completely missed the cherry blossoms. But um, in the gift shop of the Air and Space Museum, they had these cool little tiny, like, you know, three inch cherry trees. Um, made out of like stones like gemstones you know at the top for the leaves and I thought oh my gosh you could totally do that with paper beads so I'm already planning in my head how we could do like a little paper bead tree so I think that would be fun so we'll see if I can get that's probably gonna be later but nobody steals it from me first now that I gave it all away that's okay even if someone else does it I can still do it too that's one of the beautiful things you guys about this creative craft that we do like it's okay like they have in the stamping world they have a saying called um oh now I just my brain is blanking um it's called case right it's called people have different acronyms for it but it's copy and share everything and basically it means like look at other people's projects get inspiration and then put your own twist on it so it's totally fine to look at somebody else's necklace or you know, craft project and be like, oh, that's so cool. I want to do it. And then you do it, but you do something to it to make it different or better or, you know, have a twist. And that's okay. Like, it's okay for us to be inspired by each other. That's part of why we do what we do. Okay. All right. So we're on to purple. So we've got our four. Now we're on to purple. So this is the um, fifth largest. So this is the one that was the largest up until a couple days ago. And this is the one that I did the Euro beads with mostly and love this. And so this will, if you're doing this, you would get a four millimeter grommet or bead core. And sometimes they're listed as both things, just depends who you're buying it from. And they're the same grommets that you would put into clothes. Like if you're sewing and doing um, snaps and stuff like that, same kind of grommets you do in sewing. We need to have somebody manufacture a much prettier one, though, that's affordable. Because they're too plain, right? Okay. So this is what I normally use for Euro beads when I use the Euro beads on chain or on leather. 
or on something like that. Because I like the four millimeter size. I, and I'll grab some. I've got uh, I've got a leather bracelet over here with Euro beads with the four millimeter on it. I'll grab that first and show you in a sec. So there's what this strip looks like on the four. And again, you can see every step up, you're losing the point. You're starting to get closer and closer to more of a tube bead. Although it's never going to be exactly a tube bead because it's always, because of the shape of the strip, it's always going to be bigger in the middle than it is on the sides. Let me grab this bracelet real quick for you. So this is one I haven't done a tutorial on either, but it's one that um, I have, I have posted some pictures on social media. So this is the Slim Euro bead, which is the first pattern I came out with, and that's the four millimeter. So this was done with this purple. And you can see it looks pretty good. I mean, this leather is a pretty small leather, but it still looks good with that larger hole. It's not too gappy. And these uh, seed beads, which I think are sixes probably, or maybe eights, they don't quite slide through any smaller and it would slide right through. So you have to make sure you use beads that are large enough. And you can see I have some smaller, I think these are the sixes, I'm betting those are eights. Um, or wait, I always, go, I always go the wrong direction with those, don't I? This, I always get the sizes of the C beads mixed up. These are probably sixes, because this is what I use most often. These are the next larger size. Um, these ones do go through the holes. So I had to put the larger C beads around the paper beads. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. My secret is safe. Are there strips for that bead? Gina, you mean this this bead, the slim um, the slim Euro bead? Just to make sure, because I didn't think I saw it when your message popped up right away. There are strips for the slim Euro bead. There's a um, tutorial on the channel. It was the first Euro bead tutorial, so it doesn't... I'm now calling these the slim, because I also have the wide that I just came out with. Here's the Mother's Day bracelet that has the wide euro beads you can see definitely big difference between the slim ones and the wide chunky ones um so this this is called the slim the tutorial doesn't say slim it just says euro bead and it's the older euro bead tutorial but the um svg download on the website says slim for these and then this is the wide and the tutorial and the SVG downloads say wide. And if you um, don't have cutting machines or you don't wanna buy the downloads, I do have the dimensions for these strips right in the video. So I'm not like, it's not like it's top secret or anything. I wanted to make sure you guys could make these beads without having to buy something. So, and yes, there are three strips for this bead as well. It's very similar to this. The shapes are um, somewhat similar, but not exact, like you can't just, take this and shrink them down and get this. So they're not exactly the same, but they're very similar. So all those dimensions are in the videos. Or you can, like I said, you can buy for $2.99, you can buy the download. And the download has the SVG file. So if you have a Cricut or a Scan and Cut or any of those machines, you can use the SVGs. Um, it also though has a PDF. So if you don't have a cutting machine, but you want a template, um, those downloads have a PDF that you could print on your printer and get the exact sizes. I also have a um, actual stencil for this size that you can buy off the website. I've only sold a couple of them though. They don't seem to be very popular, so I haven't made a stencil for the larger size. So it's an actual um, physical stencil. Let me show you, hold on. So this one is not the Euro. This is actually for a regular for this type of for this type of one, but it's actually a physical stencil that you can hold down and trace. But I just haven't sold too many of these. So I haven't made I haven't put these public. I still just have the one out there. So if you guys like these stencil ideas, let me know because I can put them out. Um, I just I feel like they're not super popular. Oh, Gina, let me know what you're struggling with. Maybe I can help. I don't know. It takes a little practice for sure. All right, and now, da -da -da -da, I need drum roll. Um, we have the new, the brand spanking new 
bead roller. And I was calling that peach, but I don't know. It's kind of more like an orange now that I'm looking at it. Um, so this is the largest size. And you can see, guys, this is much larger. Here, let me make sure. Again, I have to flip over and make sure I'm on screen. Um, this is actually quite a bit larger than the purple. Quite a bit. It's it's actually one millimeter larger. This is this one's going to get you the five millimeter grommet, and this purple gets you the four millimeter grommet. So, um, but it's quite a bit bigger. And the whole reason why I had to make it is because when I decided I wanted to do this project right here, which is the Mother's Day bracelet. Um, the four millimeter purple or the purple with the four millimeter grommet is not large enough for the snake chain. Now it'll go over the first part of the snake chain, but it will not go over these um, stopper areas and it, and it wouldn't go over the edge. I believe on this particular one, I tried a couple different styles of snake chain. It wouldn't even go over this first piece. So I was like, okay, time for a larger bead roller <laughs> because pan I mean, these types of like Pandora ish, beads they go on the snake chain that's what you do with them right for the most part that's the most popular way to wear them so we have to have a bead roller that we can use with the snake chain that makes sense um this big one yes so this big one just came out and you can pre-order it because we're just manufacturing them right now but if you pre-order it before monday you get 15 percent off so it's on the website. If you um, go to bead rollers, let me see. I think I can flip over. Let me just check. Website. Ah, there we go. Okay. So if you um, go to the website, paperbeadrollers.com, there should be a um, piece right here in the middle that shows you the new one. It's the one quarter inch in peach. It's actually orange. I probably need to change that because it does look more orange than peach. And it's on sale. So these are going to be a little more expensive than the other ones because the materials are just more expensive. And also they're a little harder to make um, because of how large they are. But for right now, if you pre-order before Monday, um, they're 15% off and then I'll ship them on, um, the sixth. So those will go out in the mail on the sixth. And if you order anything else with them, um, it'll also go out on the sixth. So yes, those are available on the website. They just are in pre-order mode right now. All right, let me flip back so I can see the chat. There we go. There we go. Yes, it is the it's the five millimeter grommets that fit this five millimeter grommets, and it's the one quarter inch bead roller. I was telling Gina, I was telling everyone before you came on, like the numbers on these. I'm gonna be honest, you guys. The numbers mean nothing to me. Like one quarter versus three thirty seconds versus five sixteenths. Like that means absolutely nothing to me in my head. So that's part of why I color coded them so I can be like, it's the green one, <laughs> because. The numbers don't compute for me, but it is technically it's the one quarter, the one quarter inch and it corresponds to the five millimeter grommet. All right. So let's roll with it. So we've got, oh, I've kind of mixed this up a little. We have rolled our pink strips with all of these. Let's roll it. One, two, three, four, five. Let's roll with the, the orange one now, our new brand new monster. What's really funny, you guys, when I was testing, so when I decided I needed a larger bead roller, I had to test some different sizes to find out which one was going to work the best. And so I was trying to roll these beads without a handle. Man, that sucks. It hurts my hands so bad. So, yeah, I, I'm very excited to get these things into manufacturing because I was having to take some ibuprofen because I have arthritis in this hand, this pinky all through here is has arthritis. I feel like I'm too young for arthritis, but which is why I made the bead rollers in the first place because I couldn't use toothpicks. I couldn't use, you know, skewers because it hurt. By Monday next week, yes. So like the 5th, I think, is the date. 
You know, it doesn't matter, Gina. You can roll inward or outward. I, For some reason, I tend to roll inward. And here, let me do it again. Let me grab another one, then we'll compare that. So I find myself doing a couple things. If I'm, if I'm not as practiced at what I'm doing, I will definitely roll this way because what I'm doing is I'm eyeing it and I'm trying to get centered. And my personal preference is like this. This just, I seem to do a better job centering up if I roll it towards me. But what I'll find myself doing, like over the weekend when we were in the car and I rolled, gosh, you guys, I think I must have rolled a couple hundred beads all the same way, all the same strip size, and um, it was crazy. And what I found myself doing, especially because we were in the car, is I found myself doing it like this. I was, I don't know if you can't see it, but I was sticking my thumb up under here. This is why my nail polish is looking terrible today. Um, I would stick my thumb up under, and I would use the pressure of this roller on my thumbnail and then I'd, I was holding it really loose, so the pad of my finger is really loose on this. The tension is coming from the this part against my thumbnail, and I was rolling it like this. And the reason I did that is because then I didn't have to grip so hard with my um, thumb because I was rolling so many beads. Like, I rolled for four hours straight on the drive, and my hands were getting tired. And so that method right there is easier on my hands and easier with my arthritis because not only is this hand, this left hand is is not having to grip so hard, but my right hand is not having to turn so hard because there's not as much tension on the strip. It's weird, huh? I don't know. I just, I noticed I was doing that. I didn't even, like I just sort of started doing it. It wasn't intentional. <laughs> but I noticed I was doing it and that it was easier. So I think it doesn't matter what kind of technique you use. I think you just have to sort of try and see. The other thing that I've noticed over time that makes a big difference in how consistent my beads turn out is my light source. Like right now where I am on my desk, I have lights kind of surrounding me because those are my lights for filming. But when I'm downstairs watching TV and bead rolling, my light source is coming from a row of can lights that is to my right. Of the couch and what will happen is the um, the light coming from this side will create some shadows and all of my beads end up lopsided because I'm, if I'm looking at it and trying to center it the shadows are throwing off my perception of the center of the bead and so when I get done with them and I pull them off I'll have to adjust them a lot more if I'm rolling on the couch than if I'm rolling um, where I have a better straight on light source so pay attention to the where the lights coming from when you're rolling because it could be making things harder for you all right so there's our biggest bead some of these let me turn them upside down hold on let me make sure again I want to make sure I'm centered on the screen for you I'll flip over okay we'll do this so I'm going to flip up the ones that'll flip up So you can see the diameters of the holes. Oh, I got it. This one I don't think is going to... Oh, I got it. Yay. So there is the, the diameter of the holes and how it's all the same strip. And it... Um, looks like a whole different bead just based on which diameter I picked. So different shape, different center hole. Let me lo kind of line these up a little better so you can see them from the side. And for some reason, I personally am not, I don't think, um, like I don't think this is an, as attractive of a bead as this, but, you know, and I was thinking, like I said, if this were on a slide, I think I would really like that shape as a slide. So I think it really depends on the use of them too. But for when I'm using this larger bead roller, of course, I'm using different strips. I'm probably not using a strip that is this size, which I think is, this is a half inch down to a point. 
you know, I'm generally using these three for my larger strips and I'm using these two for my tiny strips and then this can be used on a wide variety of strips. So, but there's, there's your difference. Same strip, just done on each size of bead roller. So what do you think? Does this help you in terms of understanding like what each roller does or like how to choose which one you're gonna use for a project? Like seeing them all lined up like that? I'm hoping it helps. That was my thought anyway when I came online to do this. I was like maybe it would help because the questions I was getting were, is this bigger than, is this new one bigger than the red one or bigger than the blue one? Like again, it was hard to figure out like where does it fall and then why do I need it? You know, what what kind of things would I use it for? And so this would definitely be for your bigger, chunkier beads, your wide, your Euro beads in particular, um, curtains, I think Gina mentioned a curtain. It is helpful, okay, good, 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 good. Um, you know, things like the wall hangings that we're talking about, um, home improvement, you know, home decorating type things. Um, do you guys want me to go grab that purse? It'll just take me maybe like 15 seconds or so to run in the other room and grab it. Do you want to see the beaded purse that I made? It's like I did it maybe like two years ago. I don't want to I don't want to leave you sitting here by yourselves, but if you want to see it, I'll go grab it. Of course. Okay. All right. I will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Take me like 15 seconds. Opened my door and Bailey Dog was laying outside the door sleeping. I was like, Mommy, you didn't let me in. Okay. All right. I'm going to try to move the camera up a little bit so you can see this better. Forgive me for making you dizzy. I've got a, the camera's on like a gooseneck. Okay. This might be a little, a little better. All right. So this is the purse that I made. This was actually a fairly early on project that I did when I first started paper beading before I started the YouTube channel, definitely. And so what I did is I got, these are just 65 pound cardstock beads. And I glazed them, I don't know, five or six coats of glaze, like the most glaze I've ever done because I wanted them to be really durable. And I use these kind of brown pearly, they're plastic actually, but um, brown pearls. And the string is like a um, twine-ish. I mean, it's, um, it is jewelry string, but it's like a cloth. I can't remember what, what it is. It's not a linen, but it's, it's pretty sturdy. <laughs> Another tutorial. I can, I can. This is really a complicated one that I'm gonna have to think about. It would be a really long tutorial, so um, we'll see. We'll see how I can do it. So, so let me show you guys though. So what I did is I wove it. So I took two pieces of string and I wove them back and forth. So it went in here, out here, in here, out here, like that, and then wove it through, and then did the next row down. So I wove the sides, and then the bottom is, I'm keep checking the camera, make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. The bottom, I wanted it to be extra sturdy, so I did I did the, the same um, thread, but then I wired it as well. I used my copper wire to make sure the bottom didn't fall out on me somewhere. Um, the handle I purchased, so I probably wouldn't purchase it today. Um, 
but I was a little nervous about making myself a beaded handle because I was afraid that I wouldn't hold. So I did purchase this, I think, from Joann's. But then here's the inside. This is the best part. So I sewed on the sewing machine a pouch out of mater raw material, and I sewed a zipper into it. Because if you just, if you didn't have a liner in this purse, everything would fall out, right? I mean, these are holes, so you have to have a liner. So not only did I do the liner, but look, it even has a little inside pocket for like your phone or your business cards or, you know, whatever you carry in there. Oh, hey, Anne. So I even made that little pocket. So I sewed this, of course, I sewed the, the pouch part first, well, separately, I should say. I did the um, beads first, and then I figured out what size I needed for my um, interior pouch, sewed that, and put the zipper in it, and then I sewed it, I don't know if you can see the stitches, but I just did a little running stitch there, I guess you would call it, and sewed it onto the um, string that I used for the beads. And I've only carried it a couple of times, maybe two or three times, because I just am so, um, I don't want anything to happen to it. I don't want it to get all beat up. Oh, and it looks like I did put, I forgot, I did put some um, wire through the top too. So you can see I've got, just to cap off the top and make it look pretty, um, I did put the wire there through these sides as well. And the little spacers. So yeah, this thing is heavy. I'm telling you, I mean, I have heavy purses anyway. I need to weigh this. This is probably a couple pounds by itself without anything in it because paper is just heavy. Um, and the cost on this to make this, I am pretty sure I spent at least $50 to make this purse. I am not kidding. Um, the amount of paper that I had to use and then buying the beads and all of that. So it's not an inexpensive purse to make but it was a lot of fun. It was quite a project. So yeah, so I'll put this on the list for tutorials. Um, like I said, it's it's not gonna be a 15 or 20 minute tutorial though. This is gonna be a bit of a longer tutorial, so we'll have to think about how best to do that. But yeah, I like this. I'll, I need to carry this. Um, maybe I'll carry this somewhere this week just to get it out and about again. I haven't carried it for a while. So thanks guys. What else do you want to see? Do you have any other tutorial ideas for me? I've got, um, like I said, I've got quite a few things on my list, but I always love requests because then I know that you want to see it. And that is, you know, I, I know that it's something that I can um, do. I saw something really cool on Amazon today that I've been thinking about since I saw it. And it's these little rings that you can put in your braid and they're, they're rings that have a charm on them and you uh, weave them into the different braid holes. And I thought that is perfect for paper beads. Different shapes for the paper, like different bead shapes. Like some of the, um, cause I do have some of those up my sleeve still that I haven't shown like, um, I've got my bead stash out. So this one I, th I did a tutorial on, I mean like different shapes like this. Like more like this and with different, um, cause there's a bunch of these different ones that I could do. Okay, good to know, good to know. Yeah, there's, I think this one's called the bow tie. There's a corset bead, there's a hammer bead. Oh yeah, cones. Gina, you're reading my mind, girl. Because I'll tell you, the ones that I did in the car, guess what they were? The like hundred, couple hundred that I did in the car this weekend were cones. <laughs> so that's coming up. I have, I'm going to do, I think a tutorial on how to do the cone part and then how to do, then some different um, projects to do with the cone. Gina and me, we're like on the same wavelength, I think, all the time. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, any 
other ideas you guys have, I mean, shoot me an email anytime, contact at paperbeadrollers.com or leave a comment on um, the tutorials. I love comments on the tutorials because YouTube loves comments on the tutorials and the more comments there are, the more YouTube pushes the tutorial out. So I, please, you know, leave me comments on what you'd like to see, any different variations that you, that you would love. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I it's weird. I, yeah, I roll beads. So my husband likes to drive. I mean, sometimes I drive too, especially when we're going on really long trips. Like if it's a ten-hour trip, I'll take a turn for a couple hours. But other than that, I'm crafting in the car. I'm rolling beads. I actually also did a little bit of crocheting in the car <laughs> this trip. I just picked up crocheting again. My grandmother taught me how to crochet when I was maybe like seven years old and then I never really did much with it and then for some reason I was at the craft store a few weeks ago and I was like you know I think I'm just gonna you know just buy one crochet hook and just like you know do one project now I have like 15 projects <laughs> Mary thanks for hanging out it was so good to talk to you have a great night. I know. Well, did you see, do you know how I keep my hands clean in the car? Did you notice? I think it was in that one picture that I took of my lap. So I'll wet down, like I'll take a couple paper towels and fold them up and wet them down and I'll put them in a baggie. And then I take, I put the baggie in my purse so that when my hand gets all gluey, um, I can wipe the glue off on the wet paper towels in the little baggie. <laughs> That's my secret, so I can um, so I can roll in the car without making a mess. <laughs> so sneaky. <laughs> it works. That those paper towels lasted all weekend. I only ha I had to add water to them on the ride home from a bottle, but other than that, it was perfect. <laughs> all right guys well i'm gonna head down it's the husband's birthday today we have um all the birthdays in our family there's three of us and chase is first two weeks later comes mine and then two weeks later comes my husband's so we have cake galore in april and today's his birthday he was down there um talking cars with his friends so i think they're done now i'm gonna head down and go spend some time with him so you guys all have a wonderful night. Thanks for hanging out with me. I just love chatting with you. And I mean it. If you have ideas, things you want to see, questions for me, leave comments on the YouTube tutorials or just shoot me an email. I just love to hear from you. That's what makes this worthwhile is being able to talk to you guys. So, all right. Good night, everybody. Have a good one. See you tomorrow.